Good evening and welcome to TV47. The time is here and I am here ready to present the news to you. My name is Victor Muyakane and it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm not alone, I'm flanked by the great Catherine Similoy on sign language and together we're going to take you through whatever is happening across your world. But first, a glimpse of what we have in store. Here first are the highlights. The doctor strike may escalate further as KMPDU announces the possibility of extending the strike to private health facilities starting next week. These issues that we have here are issues for all doctors. Yes, we may have a few private hospitals that are still working, but as of today, all the consultants will not be offering services. Government spokesperson Isaac Muara suggests that unidentified people may be responsible for the fake fertilizer scandal, reassuring the public that the government-subsidized fertilizer is safe for farmers to use. People saying uh, the, the cabinet secretary for agriculture to resign, I think that is a long shot. There's no way he's personally culpable on this one. He's And a group of unidentified people raided and attacked individuals at the home of Busia Senator Okia Omtata in Kwangamore Village, Busia County. With the Orange Democratic Movement Party now calling for a thorough investigation into the incident. Kitendo kama hicho sisi tunalani na tunasema wale ambao wanahusika, wanausalama, waeze kuchunguza kujua haswani nini litendeka. All that and more tonight on The Daily Report. Indeed, that is just a glimpse of what we have in store for you this evening. But before we begin, here's my appeal to you. The, our producers are going to put numbers on the screen. Let us know where you're watching us from. Let us know what you think about the news. Give, in short, give us the views and reviews on the news through the numbers that will be running on your screen, let me know and I'll be happy to sample them and respond to you. Over to our first story. And the doctor strike has gotten worse after KMPDU announced that consultants will also join the strike, which will cripple services at private hospitals across the country. To add insult to injury, medical and clinical trainings have been suspended at the University of Nairobi. And as Elizabeth Etienne now reports, medical interns are yet to begin picking their letters at the Ministry of Health following a directive issued by the doctors' union. Now, the casualties of this particular doctors' strike are everywhere. Let's have a look at what Elizabeth has prepared for us in this story. The doctor's strike that has entered its 22nd day Thursday is likely to escalate to private health facilities effective next week. This is according to the doctor's union KMPDU, which has revealed its intention to mobilize all doctors to join in the strike. And this will continue next week. We'll see how to make sure that doctors also working in private hospitals, like Nairobi Hospital, like Mata Hospital, like Agakan, they see the need to protect the profession. It was business as usual at the Afia House building for the better part of Thursday morning, a sharp contrast to what was expected after the government directed 1,215 medical interns to pick their letters. However, they were a no-show. KMPDU has maintained that they are not willing to accept the government's proposal of cutting the medical intern salary from 206,000 per month to 70,000 Kenya shillings. They have asked all the interns that that letter is disgusting. It is contemptuous. It is a show of immorality. We've told our doctors not to pick any absurd letters. They can use that as the ministries to probably plaster their walls. With those letters. Principal Secretary for Public Health, Mary Modoni, has called on medical interns to take the 2.4 billion shillings offer, saying if unutilized by June, the funds will go back to the Treasury and everyone will lose. It would be wrong for me to take back money to Treasury simply because we, 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 we are not agreeing on something. So I'm imploring on them. It would be important that uh, they get their licenses after internship. 
And as the doctor strike escalates, clinical trainings have been suspended at the University of Nairobi following the ongoing doctor strike. Health services in public hospitals are likely to worsen after over a hundred consultants from Kenyatta National Hospital and the University of Nairobi announced they will also join in the strike. Yes, we may have a few private hospitals that are still working. But as of today, all the consultants will not be offering services just like doctors are out. Can find a solution to the strike have failed to be effective as Kenyans continue to struggle. The effects of the ongoing doctor strike continue to be felt countrywide. This as tragically a newborn lost its life just hours after birth due to health complications. The child passed away while on route to Kilifi County Referral Hospital as it was unable to secure admission at the Coast General Hospital in Mombasa where it had been referred to from a private health facility. Another incident involved a two and a half year old child who succumbed on a Monday. She had developed fever and on here she met up with the nurses who they were able to perform first aid for the baby and uh, they were supposed to transfer her somewhere else because the doctors were also on strike but because the parents again they could not afford unfortunately the baby died on the same day at 10 p.m. Patients in Mombasa and other parts of the country have been compelled to seek services from private health facilities suffering the burden of expensive care. We can't continue losing lives we can't continue seeking uh, services at very expensive ends where uh, that same fraternity is serving other Kenyans. It is improper and this is injustice against the poor. Assessing the effects of the doctor strike in Mombasa, activists from the Coast Civil Society Network led by the Achia person Zerekaya Adika have expressed displeasure with the government for allegedly failing to address the grievances raised by the doctors on time. To the bomba to Serikali, Wizara, County Husika, Ziweze Kuangazia, Maswala, Yahu Mgomo, na Ziweze Kukomesha Hu Mgomo, Maramoja, Hili wa Kenya, Waweze Kuende this as the labor court in Nairobi issued 14 days to the Ministry of Health and the doctors to end the standoff. So far, the national government has promised to meet part of the doctor's demands, including the hiring of intern doctors, with the doctor's union disagreeing with the terms. Paul Amonio, TV 47, Mombasa. Now, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi has now been requested to testify before the National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock on April 8th in order to provide information on the sale and distribution of fake fertilizer to farmers. And as Mike Kagwongo reports, government spokesperson Isaac Mwara told the people calling for the resignation of the CS that it is unlikely to happen and that Linturi is not directly connected to the incident. The debate over distribution of fake fertilizer has taken a sharp turn. And Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Medeka Linturi must now go before lawmakers in order to clarify any misinformation about the now hot topic. In light of its possible influence on the government's intentions to ensure food security for the nation. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. The National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Agriculture and Livestock Deputy Chair Branton Ayagon stated that his committee does not take the issue lightly. The committee has since invited CS, uh, PS, MD KFIS, uh, uh, MD and TBP uh, for a second meeting to discuss uh, on the fertilizer subsidy program on Monday 8th, April 2024. Linturi previously advised the farming community not to give in on what he called misinformation, despite the fact that farmers around the country are becoming more concerned. Uh, NCPB being contracted. However, pointing out that he was not personally connected to the affair, a government spokesperson Isaac Mora supported the embattled cabinet secretary. People Saying uh, the, the cabinet secretary for agriculture to resign, I think that is a long shot. 
There's no way he's personally culpable on this one. He's not involved. The investigations are still ongoing. If you look about the issue, GPC this is a private entity uh, working with a government agency. So I think that is uh, neither here nor there. He added that there was a possibility it was a ploy by those he identified as political rivals to undermine government's initiatives to provide farmers with discounted fertilizer. So far, more than 2,650 bags of suspected fake fertilizer that had been given to farmers have been recalled. Mike, Kagwongo TV 47, Nairobi. Tell me something, have you seen this fertilizer? Have you experienced it? Have you handled it? Let us know what you think about it. What was your experience with this fertilizer? The numbers should be on, the, on your screen any time from now. I should be able to handle those concerns. Now, here's another story. Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja has changed his tune regarding the recording of city enforcement officers during arrests. This is less than a week after announcing that those recording this or other these incidents will be charged with obstruction of justice. This came during a state of the county address at Nairobi City County Assembly where the governor looked back on the various programs that his administration has undertaken in the time they've been in office. Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja chose a colorful ceremony where he looked back on his tenure so far as the venue to admit that he was wrong. The governor had a change of tune regarding Nairobi residents recording badly behaved county enforcement officers, especially those using crude means to arrest hawkers. Making his state of the county address, the governor made it clear he only had an issue with people obstructing his officers from discharging their mandate. To set the record straight, members, and to be clear, there is no problem whatsoever in recording officers as they perform their duties. If anything, it leads to increased accountability. You can even shoot a movie if you want. What we will not accept is obstructing them or inciting the public to turn against them as they perform their duties. Order will be established and order will be maintained. The change of heart comes barely a week after the governor gave the Nairobi County Enforcement Officers the green light to arrest Nairobians who record them when making arrests, notably without citing any law that backed such an order. Sakaja said that while the days of enforcement officers engaging in running battles with hawkers in the city are long gone, there are still people who still want to sensationalize arrests. Part of the proposals we have is to introduce, once the assembly passes, the use of body cams, body cameras, on our officers, so that the whole story can always be seen. When somebody takes a three second clip or half a minute clip and blasts it on social media, always half of the story is told. But just like a coin, there are two sides plus the other side. There are actually three sides. Let us have the full story and let us affirm the integrity and the dignity of Nairobi City County government officers. Kisawa Emory, TV 47. Now, in other news, former Kisi Deputy Governor Josh Maangi faced tough questioning from MPs who demanded explanations on how he amassed one billion shillings last year. Maangi had previously attributed the wealth to his businesses, but MPs sought further clarification on the nature of these businesses. Appearing before the National Assembly's Defence Committee, Maangi, who has been nominated as Kenyan ambassador to Uganda, disclosed his business interests to the MPs, which includes ownership of a house in the USA, among others. The other nominees also faced questioning regarding their experience relevant to their appointments. The vetting of 27 nominees for ambassadorial, ambassadorial positions commenced today and carried out by National Assembly's Defence Committee, chaired by Belgut MP Nelson Koech. 
Joash Mangi found himself in the hot seat today. The former number two in Kisi County being tasked to explain to the committee members the investigations conducted by Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission ESCC during his tenure as director in the housing project and peace urging him to step aside until his name is cleared but Mangi insisted that he has no case to answer. On the side uh, and concentrate on um, defending yourself and clearing your good name before taking up a high commissioner position under the current circumstances. I am 100% sure that I'm innocent, my company is innocent and this is why the ODPP does not bother to prefer any judges. And you know sometimes there can be mischief. Mangi also told the committee that he made a billion shillings just last year, further revealing that he owns three homes, including one in America, where he resided for several years. He disclosed that his net worth amounts to 693 million shillings. I own businesses that bring me some income and to the tune of maybe to continue bringing the tune of um, eight to nine thousand eight to eight to nine hundred thousand monthly. Another nominee, Catherine Kirumba, who has been nominated as ambassador to the UK, told the committee that she is worth two hundred and fifty million shillings. However, MPs raised concerns about her competence due to her lack of experience in the public service. Despite this, she maintained that she is capable of providing the required leadership. Given an opportunity, I'll use bilateral relations to foster economic activities and very many other developmental areas so that we achieve our goals in our representation. Former West Woman Representative Lillian Tomitom also appeared before the committee, disclosing that she is worth 60 million shillings. She also defended her competence and so was former Lieutenant General Jonah Mwanke, expected to represent Kenya in Iran, as well as Caroline Dowdy Kamende, also appearing before the committee. However, Jonah Mwangi and Caroline Dowdy Kamende did not reveal their net worth. Elizabeth Mutuko, TV47, Nairobi. Now, Senator Okia Omtata's rural home was earlier today attacked by unknown people, an incident that caused panic in the family as well as neighbours as two family members sustained injuries from the attack. The senator has revealed that he was not at his home at the time of the attack, while at the same time calling on the government to help with investigations into the incident. The ODM party has also come out strongly to condemn the attack at the senator's home. Take a look. During the early hours of the morning today, an alarming incident unfolded in Kwangamor village, Busia County, as armed attackers raided the residence of Senator Kiom Tata. The assailants allegedly subjected his relatives to harassment and assault in an attempt to extract information regarding the senator's whereabouts. Isdorom Tata, the senator's younger brother, revealed that the attackers forcefully entered the premises at approximately 2 a.m., proceeded to aggressively interrogate the family members, demanding details about Senator Omtata's location. His story counted how the assailants targeted his wife and due to her resistance, they dragged her towards a nearby swamp until her cries for help alerted other family members and neighbors, prompting a swift response to rescue. Senator Omtata, who was not present at the time of the attack, expressed shock and condemned the perpetrator's actions. He clarified that he had left home the previous evening and emphasized that he does not engage in meetings during nighttime hours. Omtata urged anyone seeking to meet him to do so during official working hours. In response to the attack, leaders and especially those from the Orange Democratic Movement ODM party issued a strong condemnation on the attack. His colleagues, we just want to request uh, that the necessary agencies, the ones that are investigative in nature, should conduct a thorough investigation into all these happenings to assure the nation, to assure the Senate, to assure members of the public and those people who voted for Senator Omtata that his life is not in danger in any way and that it is not related to any of the work he does either as an activist or a, a senior uh, member of the Senate uh, so that we can be assured that he is going to be okay. 
A group of senators has also urged national security agencies to take decisive action against what they describe as village militias allegedly supported by governors seeking to avoid accountability. I also call upon the other governors to be tolerant, to just do their job. If you don't want to be uh, uh, your dirty linen to be brought out, just do your job in accordance with the law. But the senators will be allowed to do their job of oversight without being intimidated by governors. Thank you. And it clearly shows that uh, the governors are really uncomfortable with the work of the Senate which I believe it is unfortunate. Busia Governor Paul Otoma has also condemned the attack, which has sparked widespread concern and calls for enhanced security measures to safeguard individuals and their families from such brave acts of violence. Ni pole sana kwa seneta wangu, hiyo maneno ambayo tumesikia, na tayari eh, nimesha sema kwamba kitendo kama hicho sisi tunalani, na tunasema wale ambao wanahusika, wanausalama, waweze kuchunguza kujua haswani nini litendeka kama kuna kitu yoyote ambayo inataka kudhuru maisha ya seneta wa Busia uh, nimesema kwamba sisi tunalaani vitendo vya uhalifu kama hiyo ya pili mimi nataka kusema kama serikali ya kaunti ya ugatuzi ya Busia sisi tunazingatia sheria zote ambazo ziko kati ya uhusiano ya kati ya serikali ya ugatuzi ya Busia na Senate This is the second attempt of an attack on Senator Kiom Tata in March. The senator indicated that his vehicle was pelted with stones while leaving the Busia law courts prompting him to seek refuge at Busia Agricultural Training College, an area heavily guarded by administration police. An Odida, TV47. In other news, Wiper Party leader Kalonzo Musioka on Thursday met the Kikuyu Council of Elders in Kembu County in his bid to cement his support from the Mount Kenya region. The Ruaka meeting, part of Kalonzo's 2027 presidential bid, in case he succeeds as Mio leader Ralo Dinga, resolved to hold another meeting where a formal declaration will be taken, or rather made, to revive the Gema community by involving leaders from the Embu and Meru communities. And as Apollo Kamau reports, the meeting comes ahead of the Limuru 3 conference, expected later this month in Limuru. Waipo party leader Kalonzo Msioka sought the blessings of the Kikuyu Council of Elders at their headquarters in Ruaka Kiambu County in his bid to succeed as Mio leader Raila Odinga and seek the presidency in 2027. The unity of purpose meeting resolving to revive the Kikuyu, Meru and Embu Communities Association Gema whose instruments of registration will be changed to include the Akamba. Kutoka sasa tutakuwa tukiimba gema ngema kamba giku embu meru because we must repeat it and hand it over to the younger generation. Hata mukisema change the name wiper iwe ngema I will be ready for it. <laughs> Unaniambia? Mbona tumeanza giku yu embu meru na ikifika akamba tunaenda kizungu at association. Tumekuja kurudisha muto mali yake na muhurumie mukamba because mukamba ameangaika tangu Yesu azaliwe naende mbinguni na bado tunaangaika na kalonzo yetu jameni si this wakati tu mtuhurumie tu mtuhurumie tu mtatuhurumia retired president uhuru kenyatta's allies who are also in the meeting barked kalonzo in his 2027 presidential bid under the azimio banner despite stiff opposition from NAC Kenya party leader Mother Karua, who comes from the region. As members of Jubilee, we want to work with you. We want to work with you. Because we believe in the friendship you have with our leader, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. We believe in the respect you continue to hold for Raila Amolo Odinga. We want to work with you. Elders from the two sides, reaching out to cement the new resolution, which will be followed by a full meeting of the Gema community with a resolve to speak in one voice on pertinent national matters. This relationship, Nisisi Tumekuja, as we go on, Nainasema, Iyo divide and rule later. 
imetuharibia na ilitoka kwa wakamba ikaingizwa hata kwetu wa kikuyu ukasikia mtu anajiita mkikuyu wa Kiambu haezi zaidi na mkaba na mkikuyu wa wanyeri wa Mulanga hiyo kitu tumekataa hebu turudiane kama duku from today kwa hivyo hiyo hii hiyo hii tunaongea habari yake let us force it to be back The meeting comes ahead of the scheduled Lemuru 3 conference later this month where the region's political parties and opinion leaders will address issues facing the region and take a common stand. Apul Kamau, TV47. Now, a few days after the Kenya Meteorological Department issued a warning of heavy rainfall across the country, Residents of West Pokot now want the government to help in the refurbishing and mending of roads and infrastructure that were destroyed by rains that pounded the county rather since yesterday. The rains rendered roads impassable and left residents wading through muddy flood waters. Various bodies, including the National Disaster Management Unit, have issued precautions to be taken so as to ensure the safety of Kenyans. This was the situation at West Pokot Thursday morning. Roads rendered impassable by the raging floodwaters and roofs blown off as a result of gusty winds and the heavy rains that have been pounding the county since yesterday. Niona mara katika katika hii hii mtoni imeleta madhara mingi sana na miaka mingi sio sio hii peke yake. The floods have completely disrupted their day-to-day -day activities as locals and leaders alike waited for the water levels to come down before driving across. Ambavyo tumefungwa na mafuriko hapa saidi ya nusu saa. Na nataka niambie wananchi wa hapa wa kaunti ya West Pokot na hata Sigor kwa hasa kwamba muue waangalifu. They only hope that both the county and national governments can work to improve infrastructure to avoid flood related accidents. The side or to construct a bridge here that will enable the flow of water to pass with the big rocks that actually are flowing through this river. On the other hand, the National Disaster Management Unit has also issued precautions that people can take to avoid flood-related incidents. Through their social media pages, they have asked people to avoid driving through flooded areas, walking through or attempting to cross flooded waters where water levels are above the knee, and to avoid sheltering under trees to avoid being struck by lightning. Kenya Met Department had issued a heavy rainfall advisory of more than 30 mm over several parts of the country, including the Lake Victoria Basin, the Rift Valley, and highlands west and east of the Rift Valley, including Nairobi. The heavy rainfall is likely to intensify more in a few hours before reducing in intensity. Vera Alberta, 247. Now, hundreds of residents at Thiba in Ware West in Kirinyaga County have been displaced by the raging floods. And these floods have also rendered their roads impassable. This has, of course, ruined rice fields and submerged their homes and businesses as well underwater. This comes after the weatherman warned that some counties will experience heavy rains across the country. The horrified residents led by Dominic Murigi said that they have encountered they have never rather encountered anything like that since they settled in the Mwea irrigation scheme in 1972. Nonetheless, many are counting their losses, blaming poor drainage for their tragedy. Tumeweza kuadhiriwa na maji yenye imekuja kama hii ni floods in fact na ili jambo mara ya mwisho kutendeka ilikuwa ali 1980s ndio tuliweza kushuhudia maji aina ya hii na kwa sasa hizi vile tunaongea zaidi ya watu elfu kadhaa hawana mahali pa kulala na hawana chakula hata nguo za kuvaa sasa hizi hawana juzi zote zimezombwa na maji ningependa tu kushukuru Mungu kwa sababu tumepata baraka kubwa e, hii mvua ime, imenyesha usiku mzima so tumekuja hapa tu kusema mvua ni baraka lakini imeleta maadha kada za wakadha kwa sababu ile mshahara yote tulikuwa tumepanda karibu 50% ya scheme sasa hivi imebebwa kunipigia simu mapema sana wakaniambia maji imeanza kufurika kwao manyumbani sasa niliamka na marafiki zangu tukanja tujue vile tutasuia hii mkasa isiendere na isiumisa watu sasa tunaomba kama tunaweza ona msaada zaidi eh, county governor eh, county governments 
eh, kufikia kufikia madam wetu governor nimemuelezea nimempigia simu na ameanza kuleta eh, usaindisi yake Now we want to take a short break. When we come back, we will have a lot more content for you. Please keep it right here uh, from the home of Untold Stories. I'd like to urge you to let us know what you think about the stories you've seen so far. Let us know where you're watching from and what your experience has been with the floods. The SMS line should be on your screen right now. The WhatsApp number should also be on your screen at any given moment, as well as the phone call number. And I'll be happy to receive your phone calls and interact with you. All that and more after the break. Na safari hii katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali. Nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus. Mini bus ni koniwa. Kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee. Soma Biblia ama ingia kwa washroom kujisuka mpaka <coughs> nimetoa hivi. I don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field. Sijajua bado. Kila alhamisi pamoja nusu kuendelea. Join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking now it is with the tech, uh, you can check on different websites uh, or or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration. So at least that one would be a direction already. I'll know like what kind of style you you are going for. To finishing touches, witness the dedication of the hard working teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality. The Realtor Tuesdays at 6:30 p.m. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbalimbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua mini bus mini bus ni koniwa kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma Welcome back. If you're joining us right now, this is from the home of the Untold Stories TV 47 Daily Report. Now, the national government through the Ministry of Land has now initiated the process of reclaiming more than 12,000 acres to the government seized by private individuals in order to achieve the affordable housing program. Property worth millions have been destroyed after the county government of Kilifi demolished houses built on government land in Mabirikani area of Kilifi elsewhere in Naro county assistant county commissioner Abdi Shakur Nazri led a group of officers to demolish houses alleged to be on grabbed public land Ruga Ival files the following report <laughs> Mungu wangu nimekosea wapi mimi? 
It was not a good morning to Dora Chovo, a Mabirikani resident in Kilifi County, after the county government demolished her house, claiming that it was on public land. However, it was a dawn full of indifferent reactions as the neighbors watched the government wrath. Many seemed joyful, saying that the demolitions were fair and that public land must be seized. But for others, it was just unimaginable, silently watched, quietly in disbelief. The one who led the demolitions was no other than Kilifi Governor Gideon Mungaro, who, in a seemingly irritated tone, condemned the high rise of corruption in the county, revealing that the land is seven acres and was initially allocated for the construction of county headquarters. Anybody who is occupying government land, unajua shamba haibadiliki, shamba iko na rahaman, inasema hapa ilikuwa nursery school, hapa ilikuwa police station. Similar demolitions took place in Narrow County. The woman, by the name Nancy, is trying to beg the Deputy County Commissioner Abdi Shakur Nasri to give her more time to vacate. Nancy claims to purchase and own the one acre piece of land, explaining to have resided here in the last 20 years. The national government, through the Ministry of Lands, has now initiated the process to return public land in order to achieve the affordable housing project. Ronga Ival, TV 47. Now, local investor interest has pinpointed, or rather has been pinpointed, as the most pivotal aspect in growing interests in the capital markets. And firms have been challenged to leverage the sector to unlock the potential in order to support economic growth and development. The Capital Markets Authority says that this could add to the recent upswing of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, witnessing a remarkable 70% surge in trading activities over the past three months compared to December of last year. Actually matured when it comes to the issues of regulations and policy frameworks. We are actually above and beyond even some of the developed nations. But the question now, how do you translate that to Mama Mboga? How do you translate that to the, you know, the growth of, the organic growth of capital from our uh, retail investors, our Kenyan, local, domestic, that is the key question. And have we been doing enough? Seeing a lot of collaboration between different players uh, in the market. Um, you know, capital market took into the financial sector and all that. And that collaboration is bringing some new aspect on how the growth will be in the future. Now, in a bid to attract foreign investment in the country, the Principal Secretary for State Department of Investment Promotion, Abu Bakr Hassan, has urged stakeholders in the Ghana economic landscape to invest in Kenya. Speaking during the Kenya-Ghana Business Forum that was held in Accra, Ghana, the PS added that trade will strengthen the economic ties between Kenya and Ghana. Actually matured when it comes to the issues of regulation. Another message to Ghana the Ghanaian businessman is that Kenya is open for business, Kenya is safe for business, Kenya is ready for business, and we mean business. And we have demonstrated that by facilitating the Ghana house in Kenya, not only to showcase your products, but now we are converting them to offtake your products. To us, Ghana is a key and a strategic partner in terms of our economic diplomacy, and this forum is a good platform to strengthen our economic ties by deepening and broadening our trade and investment.
na safari hii katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina mbali mbali nilikuwa na nisani kama kumi na pia nilikuwa nimenua main bus main bus niko niwa kushinda unaangalia simu ya mzee soma biblia ama ingia kwa washroom kujisuke mpaka nimeitoa hivi i don't know whether any of my children would want to get into the political field sijajua bado kila alhamisi pamoja nusu kuendelea Join us on a journey through the concrete jungles and rising skylines where every beam, every nail tells a story of progress and vision. In every aspect of life, you know, you have to look at several dynamics. From groundbreaking now it is with the tech, uh you can check on different websites uh or or you check uh, online and you can see some inspiration so at least that one would be a direction already i'll know like what kind of style you you're going for to finishing touches witness the dedication of the hard working teams who bring these ambitious dreams to reality the realtor tuesdays at 6:30 p.m. <laughs> Good evening. If you're joining us right now, it is time for Insight tonight. And tonight, I'm joined by a guest who has a wealth of experience in the subject matter. She knows this inside out. This is a subject that is very, very close to her heart, and I believe something that will be of interest to you or a person near you. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the discussion. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Karibu sana. Yeah. Kenyans want to know. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> Where do you come from? Yeah. And what do you do? Uh -huh. So my name is Maryam Yusuf. I am a counseling psychologist by profession. I'm uh, currently doing my work here in Nairobi. I come from Limuru, but uh, I've been working in Nairobi uh, specifically in the field of mental health for five years now. Right. Yeah. You focus on a particular section of society. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that and yeah. what challenges do they actually go through yeah. that make you wish to intervene? Mm. Yeah, we actually uh, focus so much on the community marginalized community and informal settlements. Mm -hmm. Informal settlements um, are now areas like Madare, Kibera, you know the slums, because uh, in these areas are, we have other factors that are actually contributing a lot uh, on the mental health of the people. Mm -hmm. So specifically looking at Kibra, because that is where I've done uh, most of my work in the uh, five, over past five years, mm -hmm. issues like insecurities, because a lot of, you know, uh, theft going around due to poverty also poverty again is another issue that is causing a lot of uh, mental health uh, issues hearing people you know committing suicide and all that a lot of uh, teen pregnancies yeah so many girls you know leaving school not uh, being able to proceed in their careers because uh, number one there is poverty at home right. so for them like there is no life after that right. yeah so we usually focus so much on in the community in formal settlements because we uh, feel like there is a lot of work that needs right. to be done right. in these areas. Right. Yeah. Now, from where you sit, yeah. who or which group is the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. particularly even among the vulnerable? Yeah. Who is the most <laughs> vulnerable among the people yeah. in, in, in that you work with? I can say young girls, mm. yeah, and the youth generally, not specifically women, but young girls uh, and also um, young adults who are women and then now the youth, mm -hmm. who are people who are transitioning into being adults. So during that stage. Mm -hmm. So for girls, we can say between age um, six to 14. And then uh, 14 mothers, we can say between age um, 
you know that high school, high school period yeah. so maybe like 12 years before 18 right. yeah so these are the most uh, sensitive sensitive ages that we focus on what sort of dangers just walk us through mm. what sort of challenges does a young girl of the ages you've described yeah. face mm -hmm. in an informal settlement yeah one mm -hmm. actually let's start here yeah. what sort of ch challenges does a person of this age face mm. a young girl yeah and then how worse how much worse do those problems become mm. because of where they live yeah i can say poverty is a huge factor mm. poverty is a huge factor and you realize even as parents we are not able to give the best to our child because we are focused on you know how are we gonna put you know meal at the end of the day on top of the table for them to eat then also lack of awareness so you find that uh, we deal with a lot of traumas that these kids are facing even from home mm -hmm. so we are dealing with abuses and when we talk about abuses is not just emotional abuses because again these girls that are are, uh, are into teenage pregnancies most of them are getting these pregnancies from the people mm -hmm. that are close to them. Oh, right. Yeah, so not specifically maybe that they were in a relationship, but they'll tell you, oh, uh, this certain person in the family got close to me and this is how, you know. And again, because of poverty, like an example of a case I can give you is uh, a mother who brought in another, like a stepfather. So because this woman is dependent on I need, you know, someone to take care of me, to feed my kids. So it's the Howard's against maybe this adult. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do. Where do you want me to take you at the end of the day? Right. Yeah. So these are just some of the challenges that we see happening in informal settlements. And uh, we feel like it's a very sensitive age. Yeah. Because a lot of traumas or a lot of uh, actually 80 percent of who we become as an adult stems from who what happened oh. when we were growing up wow so all the anxieties that we get now maybe uh depression um even traumas were just stemming from what was happening growing up so tell me clearly yeah with, with how important this time frame is for yeah. our own development yeah how then do we secure the lives mm. or the futures how do we secure the futures of young girls mm. in such a disadvantaged environment mm. because it looks like from the sound of it i mean the challenges they face first of all yeah. uh are, are hard and then when you factor in where they are yeah it pounds those problems those mm. challenges yeah so how do we secure the futures of such girls yeah what are the things that you are doing what mm -hmm. are the things that you expect should be done yeah so i can say creating a lot of awareness which is what i do mostly in the community mm -hmm. because that's where it starts even for these parents so uh for us what we do is we'll create a lot of mental health awareness even for these parents to understand what is mental health mm -hmm. what does it mean when you have, what are the, some of the signs that are showing when you have depression? And how, how can you also help yourself so you de don't uh, transfer this uh, to your kids or maybe the trauma to your kids? So first we start with awareness. And uh, even before, after starting the teen, uh, teenage pregnancy programs, we realize that the problem starts even before these girls become teenagers. Mm -hmm. So what do they understand about themselves? What do they understand about their bodies? What are the, some of the boundaries they need maybe to set for themselves in order for us to help them avoid these teen teenage pregnancies? So we start first with awareness, and then we also do mentorship. Yeah, Even for teen Teen, teen mothers so it's okay this happened but it doesn't mean that this is the end of your life right yeah so we do a lot of psychosocial uh, support programs where we take them through counseling sessions then we do mentorship to be able to bring that confidence in them and just make them um reassuring them that this is not the end of it there is life after this right. yeah so once their mental health is okay then we bring in now other factors like um economical empowerment training for them so we'll help them uh, learn entrepreneurship skills some have started businesses and are doing very well mm -hmm. so even us being able to remove them from the mentality of you know it's poverty and that's the end is a way of us ensuring that we have a better future okay. yeah so mentorship awareness and then also providing resources so this includes training mm -hmm. vocational training that i was talking about yeah so this is actually what we can do as a society right. yeah in order to help um out
Okay, so you've been doing this for the past five years in that in those communities. Yeah. What are the main challenges you face in doing your job? What's mm -hmm. stopping you from doing your job mm -hmm. much, much better? Uh, I think um, I can put in terms of support, I think maybe from the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing is, like now if you look at mental health in Kenya, actually if you are found committing suicide, you'll be, I think, jailed. <laughs> That's what, what happens, yeah? So it's so hard for people to understand that even this person who is trying to commit a suicide by, you know, trying to die by suicide, is, that is actually a mental illness. That is actually depression that is causing all this. So this person needs help. This person needs to be taken maybe to a facility instead of being jailed. So we feel like we are trying to put a lot of measures into improving lives, but at the end of the day, we go backwards. Mm. Yeah, we go backwards. But is, we see hope every day. A lot of people are embracing uh, mental health. A lot of people are coming out to seek help. So I'd say that's one challenge. Another challenge is, you know, our cultures in Africa. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard, especially for the for the boy child to be able to say, okay, yeah, yeah. I need, you know, I men, need men help. Don't cry. They don't. Men, men don't speak about their problems. <laughs> in fact, they don't have problems to men, begin men with. Problems. Yeah, we are okay, you know. Men don't ask for help. Yeah. In fact, men don't even ask for directions. Yeah. You just find yourself in Namibia and yeah. you're trying to go to town. <laughs> I know. So yeah. Don't. Men don't ask for that. Yeah. Why do you think? Mm. Okay, so so actually about that point, which mm. is a critical thing. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. It's a big barrier for mm -hmm. access to mental health. It is because at the end of the day, these girls are going back to these men. At the end of the day, this the awareness is you know uh, men are larger. Uh, I can say part of our community. You know, in terms of pushing things forward. So if we are not moving in the same boat, we'll keep on, you know, going back. Yeah, and then we're also not able to help a lot of youth because one of the biggest challenges we've uh, mentioned is it's very hard for boys to be vulnerable, even the youth that it will yeah. in the community. So they'll say, okay, yeah, we'll go do an awareness session and we're like, yeah, these are the signs of depression. And they realize, okay, so you mean my substance abuse, because there's a lot of drug cases also in the, in the slum areas. So they'll say, okay, let me, let me try. Let me go for this therapy and see what happens. Right. So they go and, you know, a lot of things happen in the therapy room. So they might find themselves even crying and they're like, oh, that's the end. I'm never going back yeah, there. Me crying, ah, no, <laughs> it's well, not yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think culture is also, our African culture is also another thing that is really pushing us uh, behind in these matters. You know, do you think that, is it fair to say that mm -hmm. anyone who's growing up in such an environment yeah. has to climb a much higher mountain to the top? I mean, the distance to the top, mm. or even the distance to just reasonable success, is yeah. much higher mm. than somebody who's coming from a different environment. Yeah. So clearly, there's need for a lot more investment mm -hmm. to help these people, help our people, our brothers and sisters, yeah. to just even just have a normal life. Yeah. Now, I want you to paint a picture of mm -hmm. what an ideal world would be. <laughs> if you, right now, you, you know, uh, holy season of Ramadan, yeah. fasting and praying. Yeah. If you could pray yeah. to the Almighty mm. and he answers your prayer, mm. what would that world look like? Mm. Talk to me about the girls that you work with, yeah. the young people that you mm -hmm. work with, the communities yeah. that you work with. Mm -hmm. What is the ideal, what is the standard that we should aim towards? Yeah. What are you working towards yourself? Yeah. What are you hoping to achieve? Mm -hmm. Number one, a world where people will just know that it's okay not to be okay. We actually- Hold on. Hold yeah? on. You, you need to say that again. That's powerful. <laughs> Good people, listen, yeah. listen to this. Listen very carefully. All right. We need to be in a world where people feel like it's okay not to be okay. Mm. It's okay to face challenges. It's okay to seek for help. Mm. Yeah, it's okay to seek for help. It's okay for you to feel like you really actually need to be supported. And this one I'm emphasizing because of, you know, guys, men. <laughs> it's, it's really okay, yeah? And uh, another thing is uh, let's embrace mental health. Let's uh, try to empower maybe young girls in, in the community. Let's provide resources uh, for them. And also the youth, because as I mentioned before, it's a very critical age because who you become as an adult is actually what did you do maybe in your teenage years? Mm -hmm. What happened when you, exactly. So if we don't focus on maybe paying attention to this critical age, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So picture this, you're a grown up. 
Yeah. You have gone through all these things. Mm. They have affected you a certain way. Yeah. I need you to answer two questions around that. Yeah. One, mm. can you give us a small toolkit of how to assess yourself? Yeah. You know, uh, self-awareness. Mm. What What do I need to, to look out for within myself yeah. that will give me a clear indication of the state of my mental health? Yeah. Let's start there. Okay, so we can maybe start with um, even physical, emotional signs. Okay. First, even the way you think. What are some of your thought processes? What, what do you talk about when you're thinking about yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Are you the type of person that would say, oh, uh, something happened at work, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a failure? Mm. Yeah? So what do you think about yourself? Right, your thoughts. Your thoughts. Because at the end of the day, what you think will affect your emotions, mm -hmm. and then it will translate to your behavior. Mm -hmm. I can give you a good example. Please. Have you ever just sat down and thought about something good that someone said about you? What happens? You feel good. You smile. Smile. You've seen people you sit upright. in matatus just smiling and you're wondering, yes. you wondering, what is, yeah, what is happening? Why is this guy smiling? Maybe they've thought about something beautiful, mm -hmm. something that someone said, and they automatically felt good. And the behavior, you see joy, you see, yeah? So it, it all starts here. Mm -hmm. Or you just sat and then you maybe remembered someone that insulted you or did something wrong to you. Mm -hmm. You become sad about it. You can mm -hmm. see anger in this person's face. So just look at, uh, I mean, assess your, your, thoughts. your thoughts. Some of the maybe challenges that are leading into mental illnesses, and mental illnesses can be even depression. Mm. The depression is actually very huge, mm. and it stems from stress. Mm. It's actually a stress that has graduated into depression if nothing was done about it. Right. So even this normal maybe stress that we get in our day-to-day -day life, yes, I understand we have external uh, external factors that are contributing to it, but we also have internal factors. Because we might be going through the same thing, maybe we have all lost our jobs. It's a very stressful thing. But what's the difference between a person who commits suicide uh, due to the stress that comes with losing a job and a person who doesn't, mm -hmm. and maybe works through uh, just just being a difficult, state. difficult state and then coming out out of it yeah so it it all starts here okay. so we should look at our thoughts you look at our thoughts they are very huge okay. and then uh we have other signs like if you are maybe someone that you usually uh, you like to hang out with people maybe every weekend you go out you know for I don't know, football matches Sports, with your friends. Whatever, yeah, walks. exactly. But you suddenly find yourself uh, isolating yourself. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, bros, I can't make it, I can't come. You need to watch that. Mm -hmm. What That's is happening? Another That's another sign. So I'm talking about now physical signs. Mm -hmm. Isolation is one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you not wanting to be involved with people. And I'm not talking about someone that is usually an introvert and they don't go out. Uh, that's different. That's different. So yeah? something that is out of, out of, yeah. character, out of normal behavior. Yes. Okay. And this can be anything. Or, all right, if you are a person that maybe eats usually this much amount of food, mm -hmm. are you, have you been overeating recently? Are you eating too much recently? Mm -hmm. What's happening? Mm -hmm. You see, yeah? Have you lost your appetite? Because mm -hmm. it can show by either eating too much or not, not eating a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. Or not even eating at all. Mm -hmm. you, you've lost your appetite. Okay. So you need to watch out of uh, uh, such signs. Okay. Another way it can show up is um, through sleep, your sleep patterns. Mm. So you either sleep too much because you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. You like you can sleep the whole night and sleep the whole day and the whole night again, but you're still feeling tired and you know, you just want to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's also another sign. Mm -hmm. Not sleeping at all is also another sign. Uh -huh. Yeah, and oh. yeah, so you ask, okay, I haven't been sleeping for two days. Do I have a problem? Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so here's something else mm -hmm. that you might need to help us out with. Yeah. So clearly, access to mental health services mm. is a problem. Yeah. For some, they're too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For others, it's expensive, and then there's stigma. Mm. You don't want to be seen walking into the guidance <laughs> and counseling <laughs> Yeah. You know, they'll say um, yeah. gangster points. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those things. Yeah. What are some, are there any ways that 
maybe we can, uh, something, uh, there's a buzzword these days, self-care. Yeah. Are there ways that we can look after ourselves mm. or perhaps even look after the people around us? Yeah. Are there things that, uh, we, you know, before we, we go to the counselor's office, mm. we should go to the counselor's office, yeah. as you say. Yeah. <laughs> but, or speak to someone. Yeah. Are there things that we can do to, to yeah. ourselves, for ourselves, mm. or for the people we love, or for the people who are around us, colleagues? Friends. Absolutely, absolutely. Friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be, before even you think about going to a counselor's office, like when it's just extreme, there are things you can do for yourself, yeah? And you actually talked about them. That is now self-care. How you, well are you taking care of yourself? How are you looking at your thoughts? What are you thinking about your situation and yourself? If you feel like you, you are in a stressful position and you need to talk to someone, do you reach out? Do you call your friends or maybe someone that you trust in the family, yeah? Do you do things that bring joy to you? Because number one, if you, if you go to a counselor's room and you're, uh, suffering from depression, even before we reach the extreme of giving you antidepressants, we will try and work it out through therapy. And one of the things we do is we try to bring in the things that used to bring joy into your life. Yeah, because that's how the brain works. Okay. When you do something that you love, mm -hmm. there is that uh, hormone that actually is produced by your body. Is it dopamine? Yeah. Yeah, which makes you feel happy again. Ah. Yeah, because depression is actually a mood. Right. It's a mood. Um, it affects the mood. Right. Yeah, so what can we do about this okay. feeling of sadness? Okay. Yeah, so do you th do things that bring joy to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how are you taking care of yourself? And so many things work for so many people. Uh, even if you want to just release, yeah? I might not reach out to talk to a friend, but maybe I can journal. I can, I can write down, you write know? Write down your thoughts. Yeah, do, do I like to sing in the shower? Let me sing. Yeah. If maybe going out for yeah, a walk yeah, or a run can yeah. work, do that. Everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, so see, these are just some of okay. the self-care practices. Right. And also breathing helps, especially for people mm -hmm. who suffer with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Just breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Breathing exercises, deep mm -hmm. breaths and so on. Very deep. You have to feel it over here, right. not just normal breathing. Yeah. Yeah, so that it calms your body and your mind at the same time. You breathe out, you breathe out. You breathe. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, listen, we are completely out of time, but I want <laughs> yeah. to give you an opportunity to yeah. say, mm. if you had to say one thing mm. to one person who's watching right now, mm -hmm. something that could perhaps change them yeah. from a path of destruction, yeah. of loneliness, mm. of hopelessness, yeah. to the light. Mm. One thing, if you had to say one thing, there's your camera. This speak is my camera. <laughs> speak to them from your yeah. heart. So I would like to say that there is someone who is willing to listen someone listened to me when I thought nobody was there to listen to me. Yeah, so please reach out. Please reach out. Someone will listen. Yeah. Wow. I couldn't have said it better myself. Mm. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming and dropping with insight. This is insight <laughs> tonight and I believe you've gotten some insight. Yeah. If you like to take long showers, yeah, there's a lot them. of water out here. There's floods everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Let's take the showers. Yeah. Let's take the showers, guys. Let's talk to people. Let's come out. Let's share before you punch somebody out of frustration. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for and good having people, me. Thank you for choosing us to inform you this evening. My name is Victor Muyakane, and it's been my absolute pleasure to bring you the news and this discussion tonight. Up next is a wonderful, turbocharged, supercharged, sporting action extravaganza in the name of a show, VAR, right after this break. katika mfahamu kiongozi tutakuletea viongozi aina namba